Sea surface temperatures are making an impact across the Bay Area. Here's First Alert meteorologist Darren Peck to tell us more in today's Weather Extra. Considering how important and consequential it is to the weather we all experience, we do not talk about the sea surface temperatures often enough. And right now, there are some hugely significant and kind of weird things happening to the sea surface temperatures, both on the really big scale out here in the Pacific and on the really close up local scale right here in the Bay. And I'm gonna try and cover three of these things and tie them all together and hopefully draw our attention to why looking at the temperatures of the surface of the water, both near and far, is so crucially important, not only for what's happening now, but also potentially for what is coming down the road next winter. If you take a look at the big picture here, there's a marine heat wave sitting up here in the North Pacific. We're gonna come back to that in a second. We've been hearing a lot about those over the last few years. That one's resembling something that was once referred to as the blob. Maybe that rings a bell. We'll come back to that one. By far the most important thing is the blue over here. That is the developing La Nina, which as we head into next winter, could have undesirable consequences in terms of the drought and in terms of its influence on perhaps prolonging a lackluster winter for this next coming winter. La Ninas tend to do that. More on that coming up in a second. But the first thing I wanna start out with is the local. What's the water temperature like right here at home, particularly in the San Francisco Bay? Because over the last two weeks, it's been doing something weird and kind of off the charts. And if we come closer to home, we're so used to looking at a map like this, you just see the static blank image of the Pacific Ocean as if nothing's happening out there, but there's a world of interesting things happening out here. If you just look at it differently, those are the sea surface temperatures and they're color coded, the scale's kind of small, so I'll just tell you, you get into those shades of deep blue right here off the coast, that's telling you the sea surface temperatures, typically in about the mid 50s. But you have to look at it in a slightly different way to gain the context of how strange things have been for about the last two weeks. Now, instead of looking at the regular temperatures, we're gonna look at how far above average the sea surface temperatures have been off the coast. And when you start to get into the shades of deep red out here, that's about 10 degrees warmer than average. And for context, these numbers should be in the low to mid 50s out here. They've been in the mid 60s for the last several days. But it gets more interesting when you come in for the real small scale. So we went from the Pacific to the coast, and now we're looking in the Bay. The temperatures in San Francisco Bay over the last week and a half have been in the upper 60s on the sea surface temperature. Very few people ever think about this. But it's worth taking note every once in a while, especially when strange things start appearing in the water, like they did last week. Take a look at what appeared in Lake Merritt. And this was a story we covered the week before last. Andrea Borba reported on this one. There was an algae bloom, first in Lake Merritt, but over the course of about the next 10 days, that algae then spread out into San Francisco Bay, and it started covering a large portion actually out there from San Leandro Estuary out towards the Bay Bridge. Again, something most people didn't notice unless you're a scientist who looks at these things or a fisherman out there, very few people would actually see it. But it needs to be recognized and discussed just for the strangeness of it, and it's also not the most healthy thing. You wouldn't want to get this on your skin. It's not overly toxic, but it's not the most healthy thing to be around. It's also not good for the ecology of the bay because that algae, that algae will start absorbing a lot more oxygen out of the water than if it wasn't there, meaning there's less oxygen for the other things we want to have there, like the natural aquatic life that lives there, and this can be a problem for them. So we'll go back now to the image of what most likely caused that. There's a lot of research and study that's going into how we get algae blooms. One of the leading candidates for what starts algae blooms like that is warmer temperatures. Algae likes the temperatures to go up. It thrives in warmer water. And here we are looking at San Francisco Bay over the last week and a half with water temperatures in the upper 60s. By the way, average for August should be low 60s, about seven degrees above average. And when we talk about a body of water, it takes a lot of forcing to get it seven degrees above average. That's what's happened over the last week and a half. It was a totally different story back in June. June, 
on the other end of the spectrum, the waters were well below average in the bay. You might remember stories about anchovies falling from the sky because the seabirds were picking them up and dropping them inland. There were so many anchovies in San Francisco Bay and up at Point Reyes because the water temperatures were much colder than average back in June. And we had this whole different array of sea life and fish that were showing up in the bay. Again, most of us never notice these things unless you're a fisherman or you study the waters closely like the scientists who are concerned about the health of the bay do. We've gone through two pretty big extremes in San Francisco Bay over the course of just the last few months. You can see it when you track the temperatures. I know the numbers are kind of small on here. January goes down there. We're following the month, uh, each month all the way up to October. And you can see how the sea surface temperatures have ranged. Here's this mini little heat wave we just had where sea surface temperatures off the coast have gotten about 10 degrees above average. This was where we started to see that algae bloom. Back here in June, when we were experiencing colder waters, that's where we were getting that influx of sea life into the bay. So really fascinating things to keep an eye on. If we want to come to an understanding for how we're seeing these changes, there is an explanation for how the waters got so warm within the last week and a half. And to do that, we don't look at sea surface temperatures on this one. These are actually pressure fields in the atmosphere, averaged out over the last two weeks, going back from the middle of July to now. So we're looking at about three or four weeks worth. We're gonna come back to that in a second. That's been a fairly stationary area of high pressure out in the Pacific. More on that in a bit. What we're concerned about now is this one. See that area of low pressure out there? We've had a fairly stationary a little patch of low pressure right off the coast. It's a bit unusual to have that there. And for the last three weeks, that has been working against the usual winds out here, which drive the California current. Normally, we've got steady northwest winds out here. But with this area of low pressure out here, it kind of fought back on what would typically be those northwest winds. The winds calmed, the waters stagnated, and they were able to warm. And that explains part of the reason for why the temperatures off our coast have gotten so warm over the last week and a half. That shouldn't last much longer. Hopefully, that breaks down and we get back to what's left of those strong north winds from the rest of the summer, and that will kind of help with the temperatures. But this one is far more concerning. That is a large area of fairly constant high pressure that's been parked out over the Northeast Pacific. And that starts to show up now when you look at the surface of the sea surface temperatures. That big area of red out there, we're no longer looking at atmospheric pressure. We're looking at an area of sea surface that's well above average and has been for a prolonged period of time over a large patch of the ocean. That is a marine heat wave. One of the more important factors that we've come to recognize in the ocean over the last several years, that can have wide ranging consequences for sea life. We've already done some reporting here on the impact that's potentially having on the loss of kelp off the coast of Northern California. So that covers two aspects of this. The last one that I wanna to touch on is the pool of blue water out here, the developing La Nina. And as we look ahead towards uh, late summer and into fall, there is a steady supply of cold water out here in the equator. We're not just looking at the surface anymore. Now we're looking at depth. In fact, over here, we're down about 400 feet. Now that's a good supply of cold water along the equator, off of the coast of South America. That's where La Niña's develop. And there is now a growing degree of confidence that as we head into the fall and the winter, we're gonna be entering a winter that will be dominated by a La Niña in the equatorial waters off the coast of South America. And we've done so many stories reporting on that, but just a quick refresher on that. When that happens, La Nina tends to reorganize the storm track across the globe in such a way that it typically lends to drier than average winters here in California. They don't all go that way, but it certainly tips the scales in favor of a drier than average winter. The bars here are just simply showing you the degree of confidence as we get deeper into winter. The higher the column of blue on there, the higher the degree of confidence, the ocean will still be in a state of La Nina. When we look at it back here, that says DJF, December, January, February. That blue bar of high confidence is telling us most likely we're gonna be locked into a La Nina as we enter that part of winter in the Pacific. 
So all of these things come together when you just look at the ocean in a slightly different way. And it's such an important driving factor in the weather that we ultimately end up experiencing. It's worth taking a look at sometimes in more detail, whether it's on the big scale or the small scale, like we just crammed into this one discussion. That's this week's Weather Extra. Paul Hagen will be in next week with another one.